So that's a bit about the basics of x-rays. Um, in terms of looking at technical quality, this is very important. So this is probably just as important actually looking at the pathology because you need to know that what you're seeing is actually something wrong with the patient and not just because the radiographers have taken a funny picture. So the tripe approach is my patented way of doing it. Everyone kind of has their own way of doing things, but I think it's useful to have a framework so when you are panicky, for example in an exam, you kind of have something to fall back on. So as with kind of everything that you do, um, you have to confirm you've got the right patient, the right age, the right patient number, um, and that you've got the right film that you're looking at. For example, if you're trying to look at an x-ray, you're not looking at a CTKEB or something instead. And then the assessment itself, you look at the type of the film, and we're going to what this means. You look at whether there's any rotation, and we're going to what this means. And then you look at how inspired it is, and how kind of how strong the beams are going through it, and whether enough of the film is kind of covering what you need it to cover. And you've not got bits of lung cut off. So the type of film, the three things that you need to look at here. First one is the orientation. So when you look at chest x-ray, usually you use the anatomical position. So right will be on the left and left will be on the right. Um, and you need to double check this. The other thing is whether it's posterior anterior or anterior posterior. And sometimes you kind of have a decubitus um, position or uh, a lateral film. But we won't really be discussing those because you won't see them very often. And the other thing is whether they're standing up or they're sitting down. So PA versus AP. This is important because there are several differences in AP films. So the first one that kind of you will commonly hear people mention is that you can't assess the size of the heart on an AP film. And the reason you assess the size of a heart is because you're looking for cardiomegaly. Um, so in someone who's got heart failure, their heart will just fill up with blood and it'll look massive. Um, and that's quite a good thing that chest x-rays are good at picking up. Um, but it's very difficult to do that reliably on an AP film. The other thing is that scapulae lie over the lung films because when they take an AP film, they don't hug the detector, so the scapulae don't move out of the way. The anterior ribs are more distinct because the beam is coming from the front. It's kind of like if you hold something closer to a light, you'll get a stronger shadow, essentially. And the lungs will appear whiter, and the principle for that is similar. So this kind of shows the difference in AP and PA um, films and as you can see the heart here is closer to the source of the AP project projection so you actually get a bigger size of the heart so again it's just like something closer to a light will cast a larger shadow. shadow. Um, so these are two films. Um, hands up for who thinks the film on the left is normal. I mean I appreciate a lot of you haven't seen many chest x-rays. Who thinks that's the normal film? I've got a couple of handful. And how about this one? How about both? Yeah. So they're actually both films of the same patient, um, and they're both normal. There's no pathology in either of them. Um, it's just that this one is an AP film, and this one's a PA film. So you can see the difference that it makes, and when you don't have anything to compare it against, I mean, there are a lot of people who probably say, oh, you know, on this, the heart's quite big. You can see a bit of congestion, the hilum looks a bit big, maybe the patient's got a heart failure. But it's actually not, it's the patient's completely fine. So with the patient standing up or sitting down, as I said before, only AP films, um, you can move the position around. PA films always have to be standing up. And this makes a big difference to um, what pathology looks like as well. And that's because as you stand up and lie down and change your position, the fluid and gas levels change. And this will illustrate that. So this is an erect film. Um, and what you can see here is something fairly obvious going on here. Um, does anyone any, any, any idea of what that might be? Pleural yeah. So what's a pleural effusion? Uh, yeah, and that's it. So what you can see here is a fluid level because it's fluid. Um, and that might be blood, that might be pus, that might be lymph. Um, but anyway, I digress. So that's on a rectal film, and you can see that fluid level because they're standing up. This is that same patient in a supine position. So you see kind of the fluid 
kind of goes everywhere a little bit. So you could still say that that's a pleural effusion, but it's not quite as clear. And if it was a smaller pleural effusion, you might just see a bit of um, kind of haziness and think that it's consolidation instead. And we'll come on to later what consolidation is. So orientation. So we need to know which side is on the left. And usually on a on an X-ray film, this will be shown by a watermark. Um, so you'll have a little L saying this is left. And there are other things that we can use as well. Um, so, for example, the organs of the body. So anyone got any ideas what you might use on a chest X-ray? The, the heart. Okay, yeah. Ding yourself over. This, this is something you shouldn't do in exams, just you said the heart. Anything else? Yes, fantastic. And there's one more thing, really, that you would use. Yeah, fantastic. So, if in doubt, clinically examine the patient. I'll come on to what this is. So, someone tell me what's going on with this chest x ray. Yes. Is it just the heart or is it anything else? Yeah. So this sinus obviously is in a fair few test x-rays. So what you can see is the three things we talked about, which are the heart, the liver, and the gastric bubble. Obviously, in a normal patient, you'd expect the liver to be on this side and the bubble to be on this side. And that's because the stomach's on the left, and you see a bubble in it, and the um, liver is on the right. And because the liver's on the right, you probably remember from anatomy, it pushes the diaphragm up and it pushes the kidney down. So you get kind of the the right hemidiaphragm being slightly higher. And the heart is obviously pointing the other way. Now, what's, what's the name of the condition where you have everything flipped over on that axis, on that kind of sagittal axis? Yeah. So, do you think this is sagittal inversus? Bit of a trick question. So, the, what else could it be apart from sagittal inversus? Yeah, so that's a similar kind of thing, so that would end up leading to a flip. So the other thing could be is the film's mirrored. So you've taken the film, and it's mirrored. So who's seen Scrubs? Who's watched Scrubs here? Yeah. Just one person? Two people. All right, so in Scrubs, they've got this kind of scene in the opening where he comes and he, he's like carrying the radiograph and he sticks it up. So back in the day, before I was a lad, they used to have um, actual physical films and you could kind of look at it both ways. And nowadays, th they kind of have to do it by computer, so there's essentially a button they press, and that's kind of part of the protocol, and it'll flip the film. So there's actually no way of telling whether this film, this is just a film that hasn't been flipped, or whether it's status and versus. The only way you'd know is by looking at the R, so the watermark. So that's something to bear in mind with the exam. You, you won't, they probably won't try to catch you out like that. Um, but it is useful just to comment on it. 